Amen. I want you to open your Bibles today to the book of Amos, chapter 3. Amos, chapter 3, and we're going to be reading in a few moments from verse 7. We're going to go into the spirit realm here today. Say that again. We're going to go into the spirit realm here today. I hope you like prophecy, because we're going to give you some prophecy here today. And in the prophetic, <laughs> yes, Lord, huh. yes, Lord, <laughs> ah, yes, Lord, Let, just close your eyes for a moment, lift your hands and pray in other tongues. Those of you that pray in the spirit, just pray in other tongues. If you haven't received it, just the prayer language, just thank him. Just come on, I, I want to, some of the prayer words, change the atmosphere for us. Open that heavenly re, spirit of revelation. Oh, anoint every mind, anoint every spirit to receive and to hear clearly the voice of the Lord today. Father, anoint your word. Let every word of man fall to the ground, but every word of the Lord break forth in our spirits today. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amos chapter 3, beginning with verse 7. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secrets. I'm feeling something. That's interesting. <laughs> Except he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. I'm going to say that again. Read it again. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. We need the prophetic in this day in a whole new dimension than we've ever needed it before. We not only need the prophets to be prophets, but we need a generation to be prophetic. We need a generation that knows how to hear from God and has an anointing and a boldness to stand up and speak what God is saying. And not be intimidated by the forces of wickedness and darkness. Somebody say the devil's a liar. We are going to go into the spirit realm. We are going to go into a dimension of spiritual warfare. I, we have treated spiritual warfare in the church as a fad that has come and gone. Back in the 80s and early 90s, everybody was teaching on spiritual warfare. The prayer meetings on spiritual warfare, books on spiritual warfare, spiritual warfare conferences and training. People were get, trying to get, they were getting a hold of it. But because we didn't persevere and see the kind of results that we thought we were going to see or became distracted, there's three demonic strategies of the enemy to take you out of spiritual warfare. Deception, distraction, and discouragement. Oh, you can write those down if you're putting them. Somebody say deception. Deception. The enemy loves that. I, how many of you remember, some of you, boy, I'm going to date myself. How many of you remember way, way back in the 1970s, if you're in the 80s, you still heard his songs, a guy by the name of Keith Green. I, he, he would do all these kind of story songs. And one of the story songs he did was about the devil saying, trying to convince people that he didn't exist anymore. You guys can help. It just, we want to make sure that, he, he wanted to make sure, it just, it's, not, it's not the devil, it's not demons, it's, it's, it's these other things. But man lives in two worlds. I'm going to say that again. Man lives in two worlds. He lives in a natural world and he lives in a spirit world. And we, we, the enemy wants to get us so focused on the natural that we lose sight of what's going on in the spirit. But there are things that are going on in the spirit. Everything you see in the spirit realm is, everything, excuse me, you see in the natural realm is a manifestation 
of something that first happened in the spirit realm. God was in the spirit. Heaven was a, is a spirit realm. God from the spirit spoke and said, let there be light. And there was light. So out of the spirit realm, through the spoken word, the natural became manifested. Now I'm going I'm to go, I'm going to go right after the jugular right here. That same principle works today. Out of the spirit. Out of, oh, no, y'all ready for something? Well, huh? The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The heart is not just speaking. It's not talking about the physical being. It's talking about the inner man, which is the spirit man. Not just out of your mind, but out of the abundance of your spirit. See, people don't just speak from their minds. They speak from their spirit. Oh, and out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. Even today, what happens in the natural is a byproduct of what is released from the spirit through the spoken word. That's how witchcraft works. Come on, you look at witchcraft. What is all about witchcraft? Even when you look at actual practicing witches, what do they do? They do spells and incantations. They are speaking words to release something from the spirit realm into the natural realm. Jesus said, are you all with me here? Jesus said, my words, they are spirit and they are life. I speak and what I speak will come to pass. What I speak from the Spirit will be manifested in the natural. So he says, surely the Lord God does nothing except he first reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Why? Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So he's still doing it the way he did it. He moves from the spirit realm, from the revelation realm, and he causes a spoken word to be released so it will be manifested as the natural. So God will not do anything in the natural except he first have it declared. Because the declaration is what releases it into the natural. No, no, yeah. Huh? Life and death are in the power of the. Woo! If we ever had an understanding of the power of words. See, the devil has lied and he said, you know, we, we used to have that little phrase, sticks and stones will break my bones, but names will never hurt me. No, names will kill you. Huh? You could have sticks and stones against somebody and it not be the problem. But you speak over that child death and you can ruin them for the rest of their life. Your bones can be healed, but the heart is another thing. That's much harder to heal. All of these things tied together to the spirit realm. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. I'm just kind of jumping ahead of myself, but that's all right. I'm, 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 I'm answering here. If I had my chalk, I got my chalkboard hidden in the back now. I was ready to put my chalkboard back up. Glory to God. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, and you shall be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall. Now, I know there's some people out there got on television, and they use that scripture to manipulate people, particularly in the area of offerings. I understand that, but it doesn't mean that the, the principle is the truth. Huh? God releases the prophetic word so we can grab a hold of that thing, and we can redeclare that thing. It may, may, maybe, maybe, oh, yes, Lord. Maybe that's why God told them. He said, fear not. He said, meditate upon my word day and night. 
That word meditate means to mutter or to speak out. To speak out under your breath. Meditate. Speak it out. Keep speaking my word day and night. Why? Because it takes it from the spirit realm into the natural. Huh? We, now, now some of you go, yeah, yeah, I, I, I've heard this before and I know it. I know we know it, but we don't do it. So we need to be reminded of it again and again and again. Because the enemy knows it and he will deceive us. And he will trick us into doing his work and releasing his stuff into the natural by what we speak. Don't you ever speak over your kids. You're a rotten kid. Because you're going to have yourself a rotten kid. Don't you ever speak over them. You're stupid. Huh? One of my favorite movies, I just, I, it just stirs my heart and breaks my heart all at the same time, is the movie The Help. Y'all ever see it? All right. Oh, you got to see it. it, it it'll, it'll make you mad, but it, it'll, it, it'll stir you up and it'll show you about the racism that was here in the South. I mean, it, you, uh, it, listen, but these women and their courage, I love that movie. That movie, Stormy Up, well, if you, and you haven't seen that, then the other one you got to go see is, is what, what's that one? The Hidden Figures. Oh, my Lord. Now, those movies stir me up. Because when I see racism laid out like that, two things. One, my heart breaks and I want to beat somebody. <laughs> I, I, I sometimes want to think, how dumb can you be and still breathe? You people are it. No, sorry. <laughs> I just don't get it. But anyways, in, in that, they, 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 they were talking about these women, these black women that would be in the households and they would be taking care of the children and cleaning the houses and everything. And the one main character, she was taking care of the little white, dog, you know, white girl, you know, of the family. And she said, you is special. Uh, you is smart. You is important. I is kind. I is smart. I is important. And had her confess that. And I'm thinking, that's what's going to raise this girl up to be something. Not the crazy mother that was belittling her all that. Speaking negative on her, you're, you're a pain. No, no, no. You speak life over that child. And don't, and don't think it's just when you, listen, it's the, your words are spirit. So it's not just important what you speak to them. It's important whatever you speak about them. When your frustration, don't complain to your friends. Same thing applies in your marriage. I mean, it's good to tell her you're beautiful and I love you, but don't go to your buddies and say, I got an old hag. Because you're going to have yourself some hagging. Because those words you release, whether she ever hears about it in the natural, will affect things in the spirit. No, I got the best wife on the planet. She's beautiful. She's godly. She... Now, you may say, no, Brother Steve, you ain't met my wife. I said, you said, not me said, y'all met my wife. She's amazing. No, no, all, all the men are like, don't go there. Don't go there. <laughs> If I flipped it, the women would be saying amen. You ain't met my husband. No, I got a man of God in my house. Instead of he ain't do, he a good nothing, do for nothing. He ain't just lazy sitting back. Why don't you just speak? He's a man of God, righteous of God. I am blessed. Come on, do you believe that your words have power? Then prophesy. Show. Cut up by Sunday. I remember this one pastor. We got, we're going to start doing it here. We've done it before many times, seen the result. But we're going to do it here back in the prayer meetings. This one pastor, he'd just walk up, and he had, he had all these seats out. had a tiny, tiny, tiny church. And he'd walk up and prophesy on those seats. Be filled. Church started growing. 
Larry Lee turned his people into prayer. His church had grown to about a thousand, and then he got a hold of this revelation, and he turned his every day, five days a week, morning prayer meeting, and they would turn to the north and the south and the east and the west, and they would say, come forth, give up. They grew by 3,650 people in one year. Something about the power of prophecy. So surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Anybody ever have God give you a promise? Do you keep prophesying it? Or did you get or, or, or did you did you get deceived and believe it wasn't gonna happen? Oh boy, huh? Did you allow the lie of the enemy to come in and tell you that what you heard wasn't gonna happen? I guess it's too bad, too late. I guess I messed up, I guess I missed it, or whatever. Am I talking to anybody here? Huh? Or did you or or did you get distracted? I was going hard after the vision and the prophecy that God gave me, but it delayed as is fairly normal. See, here's, here, can I give you a little help here? Here's the problem with prophecy. Prophecy, because there's no time to distance in the realm of the spirit, when prophecy comes, it feels like now. But it might be for a long time in the future. But because it feels like now, because there's no time or distance in the realm of the spirit, when it comes to you, you're, it's like you transcended time, and for a moment in the spirit, you're standing in the reality of what is yet to come to pass. So then you walk out of that prayer time or that Bible study time or that church service or whatever it was, and you walk out going, whoa, and your emotions say, now. And then a week goes, and it hadn't happened yet. And then two weeks goes, and it hadn't happened. And then a month goes, and there. And what, when you walked out, you were telling everybody, the Lord spoke to me. And they will remind you of that. I thought you said three months ago the Lord spoke to you. Well, he did. He spoke to me. But at what point are you giving up on that? At what point are you letting that go? At what point are you no longer prophesying that? At what point are you no longer realizing that what is released through the word but from the spirit is that's what brings it to the past and the natural? Why did you, why did you stop prophesying? Why did I stop prophesying? Huh? Did I get deceived? Did I start believing a lie? Everybody deals with levels of deception. Everyone deals with levels of deception is simply this. Don't walk around like, oh, freaked out like that's some horrible work. Deception is any area that you believe that's not in line with God's word. That's deception if, because only God is true. So anything we believe that's not in line with God's word is a deception. Right? Did you believe a lie? Did you get distracted? Life will distract you. Great man of God by the name of Paul Washer. Probably preached one of the greatest gospel messages I ever heard. It, you can look it up on YouTube called Paul Washer Shocking. And it's a one-hour gospel message. Probably the greatest gospel message this Baptist preacher that I have ever heard. Clearest, sharpest, I mean, to the core. He was a missionary for years in Peru. Living in a tent. Didn't even know where he'd get his food from day by day. He would just wake up in the morning, pray, read, read the word, go out and find people to minister to. Then end up, end of the day, back in his tent. Now he's a famous preacher all over the world and here in America. And someone said, oh, Paul, wasn't it so hard for you to live for God in Peru, living in that tent? He said, no. It was easy to live for God in Peru. It's hard to live for God in, in America. He said, in Peru, every day I had to trust him for my provision and for my protection. And, and every day I had to lean upon him. Here, I got it, everything done. I don't wake up wondering, am I, well, where's the food going to be? I don't wait, wonder, wonder, you know, is, is the rain going to blow my tent down? I live in a beautiful house. The distractions have come in in our lives. The distractions of these. And we have to understand and we have to guard. Jesus warned us, guard our hearts against them. And every one of us deal with it. Now, listen, listen, here's the deal. I would rather fight that now in America and guard my heart than God put me in a place where I don't have to fight it. 
You say, what do you mean by that? Like Kenya. Here, I put you in a slum in Kenya. I would rather say, Lord, I'm going to learn the lesson here in Texas. I'm not going to let my gift. Go. Come on, let's be real. <laughs> Deception. And then the third, and this is the biggest one, is discouragement. Discouragement comes in. Discouragement comes in. We, we get tired in the battle. We, we heard the promises. We heard the promises. We heard the promises. We heard the, and, and we declared it for a while. And then we start speaking death over it. We start speaking. And I'm guilty. Don't look at me so spiritual. I'm guilty. I've done it. But what do you know? What is that word? I'm going to take what God put in the spirit. And I'm going to open my mouth. And I'm going to release it. And I'm going to endure it to the end. First Timothy chapter one, verse 18. Oh, actually, let's. Uh, yeah. First Timothy chapter one. He said, I charge this charge. I commit to you, son, Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the good warfare. Having faith and a good conscience. Let me read that again. This charge I commit to you, son, Timothy. According to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them, by what? By the prophecies, you may wage the good warfare. God has given us prophecy to wage warfare. Okay, I'm going to come over to this side and see if it's better. God has given us prophecy to wage warfare. He didn't give you a prophecy so you could just have a moment of feeling good. Wow, well, I got a word. No, he gave you that prophecy so you could wage warfare. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, taking captive every thought and making them come into the obedience of Christ. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to be void, but it shall accomplish the purpose for which I sent it. I gave you prophecy that you could use the prophecy, that you could open your mouth and declare what I'm saying and thus begin to engage in warfare. Daniel. Prophesy over these bones. Samuel, prophesy over this king. Isaiah, prophesy over these enemies. Prophesy. Open your mouth and release it. And when you open your mouth and declare it, it begins to engage a spiritual warfare. The word of prophecy I've given you, the word of promise I've given you, when you open your mouth and declare it by, with faith and a good conscience. Now, that's what he said there. He said, by faith, uh, having faith and a good conscience. The two things in order for it to work. One, you got to do it in faith. You're not going to just sit there and say, well, and just, you know, because some people declare things and they don't believe it. I'm blessed and highly favored. No, somebody say, I'm blessed. Now turn to your neighbor and say it like you believe it. I am blessed and highly favored. First thing you got to have is some faith. Faith coming by. Hearing and hearing by the word of God. Stir that thing back up. Get that prophecy. Record it. Write it down. Read it out loud to yourself. Get it bubbling back inside of you. Get that faith right. Yeah, I am blessed. I'm going to be debt free. My body's going to be healed. I'm going to be in the midst of a great global revival. Fire of God is coming to Keller, Texas. Stir, re, we're going to redeem the wells of revival. Yeah. Faith. Faith. My marriage shall be whole. My, my kids shall be saved serving God, preaching the gospel. Shut up, devil. Sometimes you just got to be rude. 
with the devil. Don't sit there and play patty cakes with them. Shut your mouth, you lying devil. You ain't stealing my relationship with my daughter any longer. Shut your mouth. I got promises from God. And if God be for me, who could be against me? Who do you think you are telling me you got my family? Am I, come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Shikara Mashaha. Open your mouth. And with some faith, God, you promised me wealth unspeakable. I don't know about what he promised you. I know what he promised me. He told, he told me to stand by my back door one day and he said, you prophesy multiple millions. And I, I was like, he said, you say it. And my, 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 my self-righteous, holier-than-thou false thinking was like, well, Lord, I don't need millions. He was like, it wasn't about you. You may not need millions, but the people I want to bless through you do. So go get it. Come on, Harvey Weinstein doesn't need it. Hollywood doesn't need it. Oh, boy, y'all, just, Hollywood don't need it. Let's go get it. Not so we can squander our own selfish lust, but God, God has prophesied for years. The word has been coming out. The wealth of the wicked is going to be transferred to the hands of the righteous. Not so I could drive around in my lap in luxury, but so that I could advance the gospel in the nations of the world. Meet the needs of the poor and the hungry and show them the love of Jesus. I'm telling you, get ready. There's going to have, you, you, I don't know if you're ready for this. I don't know if you're ready for this. I, there, there, there are churches that are going to buy out whole old mix, oh, a big metroplex, the big uh, movie theaters with 25, 30 theaters. There's churches that are going to buy them out for pennies on the dollar. And you see what they're going to do? They're going to have services in every room. I've seen it in the spirit. In fact, I've seen this where we all have one theater has an apostolic service. Another one has a prophetic service. Another one has the evangelistic service. You, you, you just walk in and say, man, I need healing. There's a healing service going on right here in, 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 in church number 14. Wouldn't that be cool? That would be awesome. I, I just need encouragement. Okay, that's theater 12. I got a friend needs deliverance. Ha, <laughs> yeah. Theater 11, all right. Prophesy. You have to have good having faith and uh oh a good conscience. Ah y'all know it's hard to pray when you don't feel so clean. Well, let me put it. It's hard to go into warfare when you don't feel clean. You might pray, oh God. Sorry, I have been praying so much. Oh God, I'm sorry. Well, I've been doing. Oh God, you spend a whole time. Oh God, oh God, get over it. Repent, move on. Get a good conscience. Come on, let's be real. It's only when you feel, when you aren't living in the revelation that you're clean, that you feel confidence to face the enemy. Because when you don't feel so clean, you don't want to face him. Well, I'm 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 preaching. Okay. Amen, brother. Preach it. Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. (laughs) But we can live under a good conscience. Why? Because the Bible says we've been sprinkled with blood. And thereby have a good conscience. My good conscience is not rooted in whether I was perfect today. My good conscience is rooted in I have faith in His blood that continually flows and makes me clean. And if I sin, I repent and the blood is, keeps flowing so I can face the devil with a good conscience. Because you can't bring accusation against me, devil. You know one of the things the devil told me when I was young? First started dealing with demons, casting demons out. Get ready, that's going to start happening again. 
Don't get freaked out. I tell you, I've seen it. it I, I feel like soon you're going to have some services here. Maybe on Sunday morning, really freak out the seeker-sensitive crowd. Somebody sitting right next to you, all of a sudden, <laughs> don't freak out. Just cast it out. Just, just go, Jesus, if it jumps, you got one. Now, if you say Jesus and tickle them and they jump, that doesn't mean it was a demon. All right, just saying. <laughs> but, you know, the devil thought he would sit there. You know what he threatened me with? You start casting you out. You start casting demons out. I'm going to have that demon open and smack and tell everybody what you used to do. Somebody's saying, what did you used to do? Shut up, devil. <laughs> I don't remember. It's under the blood. <laughs> that guy died in 1986. <laughs> no, no, no. And I, I'd, literally, I'd have to say that. Oh, no, I got a good conscience. I'm washed in the blood. I'm forgiven, and I forbid you to speak. You're going to go into this good warfare that comes that you can engage in by prophecy. You got to do it by faith. And you got to make sure you got a good, good, a good conscience. Just because you've been, you, you haven't been living at the level that you hoped you'd be living at, doesn't mean you can't go to warfare. See, see, guys, y'all with me on that? Because what happens is we, we, we get beat up a little bit. We get in the battle. We get maybe defeated or discouraged or distracted or, 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 or deceived. We get in the battle. We, and, then, and then all of a sudden, then we got that word of prophecy, which was given to us to engage in the warfare to get us out of it. But the enemy is saying, oh, but look what. You've already been under it. Therefore, you're not qualified to prophesy. Thus robbing you of the weapon that gets you out of the battle, thus keeping you in the cycle of defeat. And you're waiting to get out so you can prophesy when you don't realize it's the prophesying that'll get you out. I'm going to say that again because that was really good. You're waiting to get out of the problem or the weakness or the struggle in order to prophesy, but it's the prophesying that'll get you out. So prophesy by faith, not faith in yourself, faith in him. And with a good conscience, knowing, hey, I'm washed in the blood, so shut up, devil. I have every right to stand here as a vessel and servant of God and declare, thus saith the Lord. Woo. All right. Speaking of thus saith the Lord, I'm going to prophesy. Thus saith the Lord. I will establish my people with wondrous weapons of warfare. That will confound the enemy and cause my glory to break forth on the earth. <laughs> I'm going to read that part again. That's good. I will establish my people with wondrous weapons of warfare. Yes, yes Lord. I, he's just talking to me so much right now. Get ready for things that you thought were so hard to beat, things that you thought were so difficult. Get ready. God's going to give you a word, a wondrous weapon of warfare, and it's going to be quick and sudden. Bam! Break. <laughs> I will establish my people with wondrous weapons of warfare that will confound the enemy and cause my glory to break forth on the earth. You shall see my power. My authority and my mighty right hand shatter previously impenetrable arenas. Stop looking at the things and saying, oh, this area is so tough. This area is never breaking. Because we believe those things. But God says, no, I'm about to release a new dimension of, of, of tremendous, wondrous weapons of warfare. And you will shatter those things. You shall see my mighty angels. And I put C and B capital letters. No, y'all didn't hear. Somebody say, I shall see. Say it again, I shall see. You're going to see with the eyes of the Spirit. You're going to see his angels. 
You're going to see my mighty angels warring to bring about my purposes. You're going to get, in, you're going to get so encouraged because you're, you're going to start seeing it. Not, there's angels. There's angels in this room. There's angels. I tell you, you know, how, you know how encouraging it is to go into battle and then you see an angel with its sword drawn standing right next to you? Come on, devil. Come on. I'm not intimidated. When you got the truth on your side, one of the very top generals, I believe it was, of the Soviet Union for decades, he said, in 1988, he said, I used to believe that nuclear power was the greatest power on the earth. But I've come to understand the greatest power on the earth is truth. God's going to put his word, his prophecy, his truth. His word is truth. Come on. Do you understand that prophecies are truth? He's going to put his truth. The truth is a weapon. <laughs> it's a weapon. His word in your mouth is a weapon. It's a two-edged sword. We had a situation yesterday. We had a meeting, and there was a big, me and Pastor Al in this meeting, and there were some things going on, and there's a big, big, big guy, big football player. I mean, big, huge, ex-pro football player. And he was not in agreement with our position. And I could just see this, you know, and he's just, you know, it's natural, could be intimidating. I mean, at one point, he started mocking, laughing at me. I mean, I'm just being honest. He was like, and I, I said, you're laughing. You would have thought, like, Pastor Steve, back off. <laughs> I was like, you're lying. And I called him out, and I, and I sit there, and he, and he was like, because you're wrong. And I said, no, I'm right. I know it. See, I know I have the truth. It wasn't an opinion. I had truth on my side. And because truth was on my side, and I knew I stood in truth, I wasn't intimidated. Now, he wasn't going to physically attack me, but you all know what I'm talking about. It can be intimidating when a forceful person coming out, and they're saying, you're, 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 no, because I know the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth will. Set you free. You shall see my mighty angels warring to bring about my purposes. You shall see the enemy flee before you. You're going to see it. You're going to see it. You're actually going to see at times the actual spiritual battle going on. You're going to see the angels and you're going to see the demons and you're going to see them run. Let me tell you something. You're going to be shouting when you see it. You're going to see it go. You shall see the enemy flee before you, and you shall see wondrous manifestations of my delivering power. I'm telling you, you're about to see some of the greatest deliverances that we have ever heard of or have ever been recorded in the history of man. You're about to see deliverance not even just on an individual level, but I prophesy to you, you're about to see deliverance on mass scale. The anointing of God will literally come into places in America. You mark these words, thus saith the Lord, will literally march into drug rehabilitation places. And in one day, everyone will be delivered. <laughs> oh! He's going to send people and his prophets into the inner cities. He's going to send them into the bound up areas. And you're going to see mass deliverances. Somebody say the devil's a liar. Say it again. Say, devil, you're a liar. We're not going to be intimidated, but we're going to see the mighty, wondrous, delivering power of God like we've never seen before. For thus saith the Lord, for you shall not be defeated by the enemy. So many Christians, even charismaniacs, are sitting their Christian lives on the edge of, I hope I don't get taken out. I hope I don't get taken out. But the Bible says, if God be for you, who can be against you? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are more than conquerors. You are overcomers. I will give my angels charge over you. 
Lest you dash your foot upon the stone, the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. You shall not be defeated by the enemy, nor shall you be afraid of him, for you will know that it is I who am fighting the battle. You will see yourself as I have made you. And you will see the enemy as he really is. <laughs> oh, that's the most dangerous thing for the devil, for you to realize it, that, that the Father is in you, that the Son is in you, that the Holy Ghost is in you, that God arising in you, and then you begin to see how puny the devil really is. Somebody's got to help me preach a little bit here today. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Do I need to get somebody on the organ playing? I just need. Come on. You're going to see yourself as you are. Not how you feel you are, but as you really are. You might feel weak, but you are strong. Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Open your mouth and prophesy. I am strong. I will not be defeated. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. You don't like this devil, do you? I'm going to do what Brother Shrill at point over there. Say, devil, you stay on your side of the line. <laughs> Shoot. Are you, uh, come on, are you ready for a little more? Come on, are you ready for a little more? I will place my anointing upon you, and you shall be as David before me. You shall not flinch. You shall not fail. For I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am the God of covenant. And I will do what I have spoken. Fear not, for I am with you, thus saith the Lord. Oh, somebody give God a shout of praise. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Griselda, we got to get that printed up. All right, we're going to put that out on an email. We're going to get that printed up. You print it out. You put it on your refrigerator, and you start prophesying that over yourself. Huh? I'm telling you these battles are coming down. I'm telling you these, these, this cycle of defeat is coming to an end. We're entering into, enter, entering into a season of new victory. Unprecedented victory. Show. Somebody say the devil's a liar. Jake, that's who you are. Aaron. Somebody. Come forth. I told Jake last week if he painted his hair orange, we'd call him the new Trump. He's going to kill me for that. That's all right. He's probably going to play some minor chord in a weird way just for me right now. Little da 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 da. <laughs> Warfare. God's raising the love of your faith. We're gonna prophesy. We're gonna prophesy. 
Write those things down. It's why we write it down. It's why we declare it. It's why we repeat it. I'm telling you, there's a new level of war, a new level of bat, of winning that's coming because of the new dimension. Let me give you three last things, and then I'm done. Number one, the Lord will strengthen you to stand in the face of the enemy. Get up in the devil's face. You're going to get up in his face. He's going, you're going to stand in the face of the enemy. He's going to give you strength. Two, God is going to take you into a new level of spiritual warfare prayer. Yeah, I'll say it, Holy Ghost. Hmm. Many of you have never experienced this, but you're going to. Over the next few weeks, God's going to give you a new prayer language. And it is a warfare language. It's going to sound very different than your normal prayer language. It's going to be a warfare language. I've, I've, uh, listen, I know that. I, I have about four different prayer languages, and I got one that's like this. Only when I'm in the most intense, crazy warfare does that thing come on. Right? Some of you know what I'm talking about, but I'm telling you, you in mass, you're going to start experiencing that, and God's going to give you a new anointing of spiritual warfare prayer, and part of that, He's going to give you a new prayer language. Ha! Ah. <laughs> Oh, karama, shakarama, sante. Shakarama, kaka, ba, 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 kaka, ba, sante. Shakarama, ba, 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 kaka, ba. Come on, somebody pray in the spirit. Shaka, ba, 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 kaka, ba, 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 